morning and welcome back to the Weirway versus Ekla for play by mail campaign. We're up to the 25th of January. I skipped the 24th uh, in terms of making a video because it was slow. When we had last done a video a week ago, uh, the Allies had attempted a counterattack, presumably under MacArthur's direct leadership on Luzon. It was uh, defeated, but it's still a pretty close call. So let's see uh, if there's tired and depleted forces after their shock attack in a day's rest try again. There's also been a good bit of maneuvering going on in China. Some dot base cleanup. And of course, phase two operations with hundreds of transports loading on their way to India. Have a couple of destroyers hunting down some stragglers of his that have been wandering around after the loss of Batavia. Clearing mines at Georgetown. Suppressing fort building at Banduing and damaging his remaining elements of the Dutch Air Force. His fighters come up every few turns to cap, uh, not today. He doesn't have much left. No surprise. So, he's using seagulls to uh, bomb my units at Clark. So, he may be trying to attack again this turn. Yep. He flew in some B 17, so I expect uh, another shock attack. I don't think the math is going to work out for him. But, uh, you'll see um, when we play the rest of the turn that I have a map in the area, but it's doing something more important at the moment. or what I believe to be more important. Because again, I don't think he'll 
it's quite enough combat power and experience to uh, throw my units out of the time three terrain. It would be a significant embarrassment to be wrong about that, though it wouldn't change the course of the campaign. And the bombers are disrupting his units at Madan. So it looks like his recon that cited my reinforcements arriving at Luzon, at Lingyan to be precise, which is where my cap is currently flying. I have a very experienced brigade of the Korean army landing to relieve the pressure, Clark, from the inexperienced regiments that are currently there. Okay, let's see what he has. I'll be ready to launch another attack next turn on, on the road to Nkang. His combat power AV is down to 663. It's good. Tank regiment is exhausted uh, trying to uh, do in the Dutch at Dijambi. No, no real issue. Okay, at Manila, still about even in terms of AV. At Madan. I guess quite a bit more there than I expected. That's okay. Of course, he suffers heavily. And what I'm hoping happens here is he sees this disparity and attempts to attack next turn uh, only to run into an infantry regiment, a veteran infantry regiment of the 1st Division that's going to be landing in Madan next turn. So if he does attack, and it's his uh, tendency, um, he'll actually be attacking into a very uh, pretty significant force. So that should <laughs> likely wrap up that Just about ready for the final push at Kuala Lumpur. Of course, there's no rush here. The end of British forces in the Tavoy region. So look to see what he has at Bandowing. So primary defensive unit is the 4th Regiment. 
and then he's got a couple of decent battalions. 600 AV in times three terrain with forts. No surprise. Yep. Okay, so here goes his shock attack. This is his second shock attack in uh, a couple turns. His key advantage are his two tank battalions. I have two AT units, but no tanks, no tanks at all in Luzon. So we'll speed through this. Doesn't look like he committed the Marines. Nope, yeah, 4th Marine Regiment's there. So yeah, he, he uh, this is uh this is all he's got. Um so doesn't get but he gets close ish to the two to one. I it says I lost 32 destroyed squads. We'll see. And he loses 41 destroyed squads and 290 disabled. Again, you have to take these um, with a pretty significant grain of salt. But this is uh, what I was hoping would happen is he's assaulted twice um, and lost Well, he'll be down to almost half his original AV um, and expended the supply doing it. Uh, we'll take a look at my actual losses, but generally speaking, um, these tend to be overstated. So we'll. But his tanks are making the difference there. Looking at what he has at Tumalo, the isolated defenders, notice a couple uh, Indian brigades, three uh, Indian brigades here. My Thai units uh, aren't going to be able to, uh, well, aren't going to be able to take that out by themselves. That's fine. Well, now it looks like I lost a little. My garrison at Rangoon dropped below the minimums. Let's just air activity this turn. Don't expect. Lost a couple sallies to ops. Lost it now. Interesting, an Ida to Ops. My Idas are doing recon in China. Elastic of Commando, Commando, 
Well, let's go to Luzon. So here's the situation. Veteran 40th Brigade uh, landing and it will move to Clark to relieve the exhausted defenders here. You can see the 21st Brigade uh, is, is down squads. Hundred and thirteenth is down three ish three squads and a howitzer. Hundred and forty eighth is in pretty good shape, relatively speaking. Field artillery units fine. First medium is in decent shape. Uh, the 56 recon is where a lot of the losses have. Looks like lost 11 cavalry squads. Lost all its motorized squads. So 56 is gonna have to be completely rebuilt. So that's where you know, my squad losses are primarily. And the 56 engineer regiment is in good shape. Engineers are important here because of their anti-armor. My AT guns are having a bit of a rough time of it. Um, they just since he shocked last turn and his combat power is unadjusted AV will be down about 300. So it'll be about 600 and he's only generating, um, in the time street terrain, he's typically generating a little less than his unadjusted AV. So, uh, say 550, I only need about a hundred or so in the times three terrain to hold. So again, this is playing out typically um, as I would expect in that just enough, I could have the equivalent of a division into the times three terrain and he cannot mass enough against uh, a division equivalent in times three terrain to kick them out. And now I have veteran units arriving that I can relieve them. I have the brigade and another regiment, so I have roughly a division equivalent behind it, and these are much better troops. Uh, the disadvantage is that I originally wanted to use those troops to um, make another attack at Manila, and I won't be able to. I'll have to uh, relieve the troops at Clark and rotate them up. But there's no hurry on the Philippines. Um, bottle them up and let them starve. On the other hand, uh, I want to look at taking Mindanao. Uh, I've cut off the flow, small flow of supply, any that it would get from Zamboanga. I have an airfield and um, again, reduce the risk of a landing there um, to essentially zero and take out the primary target is to take out the airfield at Pegion because what I want to do is remove the last level three airfields here that he owns so I can take Balak Rappen, Samaranda, uh, and the only risk is just keeping him suppressed at Banduing so he doesn't fly in B-17s uh, and try to wreck my wreck the capture oil. Um, but I can 
concentrate hundreds of bombers on suppressing that single airfield. So uh, that's the plan. Let's take a look here. So said I'm gonna I'm gonna land this regiment. I'll uh, give it a direct path, absolute, and full speed, and land a veteran regiment of the first division at Medan. And if he counterattacks, as I expect, he'll be in for a nasty surprise. I won't attack again at Dijambi until my armor unit can recover. Uh, not terribly worth. Yeah, look, at they're disrupted and highly fatigued. And we'll finish mopping up on Java. My invasion task forces are on their way. They'll arrive off Viz uh, on or about the 30th of the month. Um, they're escorted by the Mini KB and the KB and sighted is will join them and we have good air search and submarines uh, off uh, in in the bay of bengal so don't expect any surprises there let's take a look so we've uh finally reopened supply path to this four um, that had been encircled at Xingxiang. Uh, and we have reinforcements on the way, so this situation is no longer dangerous for us. Meanwhile, we have uh, four divisions uh, who are leaving Wuchang, marching on just this lightly held hex in front of Changsha, where essentially with bulk of his forces here going to make a quick stab at Changsha and either force him to give up this position or risk losing Changsha, which uh, then, of course, we're prepped and ready in the, for a grinding battle of attrition at Changsha, uh, but we will win battles of attrition. We'll attack again. Uh, in Kang, our forces are generally in good shape. Uh, we just burn up supplies to the point that we can only attack about every other turn and yeah, but that's working out. It's a real meat grinder for the Chinese, and our losses <laughs> in you know, weeks of campaigning have been essentially uh, measured in a couple tanks and trucks. He's bombarding here, but again, we have a good division dug in in times three terrain. He has about a thousand AV. Um, there's, you know, it'd be fine if he attacks. Here, he's encircled by two divisions. That uh, he that he's which really didn't uh, doesn't take a lot to do that, and so these guys are getting low on supply. So I have transports dropping supply to them. But let's make sure I'm talking about the right hex here. Yes. Okay, so yo. Know, yeah. Low supply. Air transporting supply. While this unit here is marching to open this hex side. And I have a brigade marching this direction to an attempt to reopen the road, but again. He's stymied this attack, uh, which isn't hard because um, I don't have any armor there. So uh, I'll probably, I might extract these units, but I don't really want to give him a chance to redeploy them. So um, I may just open the supply route and I need to look at perhaps um, a different option for getting in behind him here. I haven't. Looks like this hex is quite well defended, but it is potentially possible to march through this hex and in behind him. So we'll take a look at that. This is this is a backwater of the 
we have with the arrival of another light carrier. We're going to form up Taga and Shoho, um, loaded up with fighters and um, some attack aircraft, and they'll escort our invasion task force. We part in a day or so with the target of seizing uh, the last remaining uh, Allied position in the Aleutians, which is Dutch Harbor. He hasn't attempted to reinforce Dutch Harbor, um, so we'll we'll go ahead and see if we can take it. I'm confident we can. I, the two carriers will just uh, loiter in the background in case he sends Yorktown uh, into that theater. Um, I don't, I still believe his other three carriers are in India, though we haven't seen them recently. New Caledonia, we're marching on Numie, um, grabbing bases in the New Hebrides and reinforcing our positions uh, elsewhere. Right now, I don't have much remaining combat power here. I'm going to pull the um, 48th Division's elements off Horn Island and replace them with engineers and a Special Naval Landing Force unit to build up Horn Island and reestablish the 48th Division as a theater reserve. Um, they'll, they're marching to take out the remnants of his Port Moresby Task Force. They'll finish the march to Buna, and then I'll uh, redeploy them to act as a uh, theater reserve in the fourth fleet area of operations. Theater reserve is the three regiments of the first division, because uh, the rest of my divisions are either en route to India or in the process of being committed to the reduction of landing on Java. Well, that's uh, it for today. Um, look forward to the next uh, week or so of turns as we uh, invasion of India. Uh, I think you know I'm going to Viz uh, Batun. Um, Viz with the adjacent Okanada uh, represent a decent base of operation, though the ports are inadequate. During the amphibious bonus period, they work just fine, and they're far from um, any immediate bases from which he can easily intervene. He hasn't cited me yet that I can tell. Um, we'll know another few days whether he's got good recon in the Bay of Bengal. There is a level three air police at Hyderabad. Hyderabad. Um, so you could load that up with dauntless dive bombers if your carriers are here, and they would be within range of Viz. And that, so got to make sure I have strong cap over the landings just in case uh, he, he does something like that. I think the dive bombers from his carriers would be the primary risk. Um, if he has an air task, you know, air headquarters there. Uh, my memory is swordfish can't carry torpedoes on this range, though I might have to check that too. But it doesn't change the nature of the problem that, that I have a strong cap over the landings because if he if he's prepared uh, and he has an air headquarters here, he's got a couple different options to. Um, potentially make a mess of my hundreds of transports. Anyway, look forward to our next next chance.